www.woca. This is WOCA News Talk 1370. This is James Snyder inviting you to join me each Sunday morning at 9.30 for Sunday Joy on 1370 AM, 96.3 FM. All right, 18 minutes after 9 o'clock. Nice looking Monday morning. Hope you're doing well and uh, thank you for listening. Welcome to Florida if you're new here. Uh, if you if you live in Florida, you might need to, you might want to be no you might want to know that scientists disco- discovered that there were people living here about uh, fourteen thousand five hundred fifty years ago. Oh, okay. Which is about fifteen hundred mm-hmm. years earlier than what scientists originally believed. Wow, right. isn't that fascinating? I thought this was stuff. a fascinating story. Uh, people started moving to Florida mm-hmm. a lot earlier than we thought, about fifteen hundred years earlier. There's a river up in the, well, at the, at the Big Bend area, the, you know, where the, the, I guess the mainland connects to the, to the Panhandle. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. The river is called the Oscilla River, I think, A-U-C-I-L-L-A. Okay. A-U-C-I-L-L-A. Uh, it rises close to the Thomasville, Georgia. I guess that's where it starts. And then passes through the Big Bend region of Florida, emptying into the Gulf of Mexico at Apalachee Bay. Apalachee Bay. The river is 89 miles long. It has a drainage basin of 747 square miles. And uh, so there you go. Wow. Anyway, the discovery of stone tools alongside mastodon bones in the Oscilla River. Wow. Uh, shows that sci- shows scientists that humans settled there as much as fifteen years er- fifteen hundred years earlier than scientists previously believed. How do they know this for a fact? I know they use carbon dating, so don't call and tell me that, but I just right. <laughs> I've heard so many <laughs> conflicting things about carbon dating. Anyway, the site on the Oscilla River, about forty five minutes from Tallahassee is now the oldest known site of human life in the southeastern United States, dating back to 14,550 years ago. Wow. 14, How cool. We, we count from Jesus, right? 2,000 years. That was 2,000 years ago, Jesus. So these are 12,550 years before Jesus. Gosh. What was it like here? Wow. I know. They're running amok. And, and mastodons are not considered dinosaurs, right? They're m- right. mammals, but... Right, Exactly. Florida State University Assistant Professor of Anthropology Jesse Halligan says the findings are monumental. This is uh, cool. She said, quote, there were people here, so how did they live? This has opened mm-hmm. up a whole new line of inquiry for us as scientists as we try to understand the settlement of the Americas, unquote. So this would have been the ancestors to uh, the Native Americans, right? Yes. Yes, for sure. There is a cluster of sites all over North America that date to around 13,200 years old. Gosh. But there are only about five in all of North and South America that are older. Mm-hmm. Halligan's research um, was published May 13th in the academic journal called Science Advances. Halligan and her colleagues esca- excavated what's called the Page Ladson site, which is located about 30 feet underwater in a sinkhole in the Oscilla River. Oh my gosh. Oh, my gosh. How fabulous is this? The site was named after Buddy Page, who is a diver who first brought the site to the attention of archaeologists in the 1980s. Mm-hmm. Same decade, by the way, as uh, Top, Top Gun. Top Gun. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> is there a connection? Let's yeah. see. <laughs> uh, so Lad- the Ladson family owns the property. That's why it's called the Page Ladson site. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the 1980s and 1990s, researcher James Dunbar and researcher David Webb investigated the site and retrieved several stone tools and a mastodon tusk. Wow. With cut marks from a tool in the layer, which is more than 14,000 years old. I guess that's where they get their, their dating from. Gosh. So, so they know, I guess, this is the layer of Earth that's 14,000 years old. Wow. The findings received little attention because they were considered too old to be real. Oh, my. Too old to be real and questionable because they were found <laughs> underwater. So they were thinking they were being faked out. Un- I don't know. Gosh. Waters and Halligan, who is the diver, 
who was also a diver, rather, uh, had maintained an interest in the site and believed that it was worth another look. Mm -hmm. Between 2012 and 2014, divers, including Dunbar, excavated stone tools and bones of extinct animals. They found a biface, which is a knife with sharp edges on both sides that is used for cutting and butchering animals. They found other tools as well. Um, Fisher, who is a vertebrae paleontologist, also took another look at the mastodon tusk that Dunbar had retrieved during the earlier excavations and found that it displayed obvious signs of cutting created to remove the tusk from the skull of the mastodon. Oh, wow. What a job. Yeah. What was it like? I mean, just picture what that must have been like. No air conditioning, that's for sure. No, no, no. No air conditioning. Probably lived to what age? 25, 30? I would think so, yeah. If they were lucky, 30 at the outside. Yeah, old man at 30, right? Sure, yeah. Uh, The tusk may have been removed to gain access to edible tissue at its base, which would Mm -hmm. make sense, right? Yes. Using the latest radiocarbon dating techniques, researchers found all artifacts dated to about 14,550 years ago. Wow. Wow. Let's find the stuff fascinating. Gosh, that is fascinating stuff. We got right here. I mean, right here. That, that's the, one of the problems with building, is that usually when, when you build, you do not excavate to see if there's anything underneath it. So you, you never know. There could be something under the mall. Right. There could be something, who knows what. I mean, you know there's a cave down there. Oh, uh, sure. Exactly. What's that exactly. called? Scott Springs next to the mall? I think so, yeah. Scott Springs has a cave in it. Yeah. And you know that that cave must have unanswered questions in there. Yep, and it runs under the Cascades and everything, so it's a huge labyrinth of... The Cascades? It goes that way? Underneath, yeah, that way too. It goes um, toward the Cascades, and then it goes, you know, the other way, opposite from the Paddock Mall, so it's huge. It's a huge area. Well, I remember I remember the underwater river right. experiment, where they let little rubber duckies into the water. Remember that? Exactly, by uh, the car dealership. That's and then under... And then, the, yeah, the ducks floated under mm-hmm. the city... Mm-hmm. And uh, some of them ended up in Tuscaloosa uh, Lake, right? So that some of that water goes that way, but others ended up in the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, exactly. And then others disappeared. Well, I find that video. There's got to be a were. video of that when when they did that. Yeah, I would think so. I would hope so. Uh, prior to the discovery of the fourteen thousand five hundred fifty year old artifacts, scientists believed a group of people called Clovis or Clovis. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Considered among the first inhabitants of the Americas, settled in Florida about 13,200 years ago. Gosh. I think they had some children who at the time said, can we go to Disney World? And they said, it's not open yet. (laughs) (laughs) Got to wait till 1970 or something. (laughs) 1970. Yeah, Clovis, New Mexico. There's a city named Clovis in New Mexico. Yeah. I wonder if it's pronounced Clovis. Uh, Mm -hmm. Now that they have a new estimate for when the first Floridians arrived, the question is how they got here. So my my, my question is, okay, so they originally thought 13,200. Now they're thinking 14,550. Do they know how the the folks 13,200 years ago got here? Right. Is that question answered? or, Or does the fact that they're older... Mm-hmm. That the artifacts are older, does that mean they have a new question as how they got here? Yeah. Because obviously the uh, the sedan that was manufactured by General Motors back then mm-hmm. yep. probably was a different model than it had been, you know, 1,500 years earlier. Exactly. Just assuming. It was a precursor to the Flintstone car. <laughs> it probably was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Halligan says it happened long before any human migration across the land bridge between Russia and Alaska, so there had to be some other way. Mm-hmm. Isn't that interesting, though, that, that there had to be some other way? That is interesting. I mean, did all life on the planet start in one place? Is that what they're saying? Well, isn't is isn't that what we're taught in school? Is that all of the continents were well, we're taught one that in the Bible land mass in the Bible. The, no, but in the Bible we're taught land that all humanity started with split. two people, Adam and Eve. Yeah, but these are scientists. Scientists seem to think, and I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just telling you what they teach: that we evolved from amoebas that became fish, that became reptiles, that became monkeys, that became us. Right. Well, you know, it's a simplistic way of looking at it, but that's that's the gist of the the theory, right? Right. But the landmass itself, it said that you know the, well, that too. the scientists say the landmass is all together and it okay. wasn't split. Like that too. It is now. That too. But what I'm saying is that 
why do we always assume that they all came from one place, which right. would which would be Northern Africa, I believe, is where they think it was, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. When they they say no, the, that whole Garden of Eden thing is just a myth. But mm-hmm. the, but, uh-huh. so, but I mean, if if we evolved from another species, then mm-hmm. wouldn't we have evolved all over the planet? I mean, oh, sure. W- couldn't we have just been here? That's right. Couldn't we have evolved right here? If that theory holds true, so. it shouldn't have been in one place. Everybody should have evolved. They don't like everywhere. when I ask questions. No, but you have to ask questions. E- even the religious people don't like when I ask questions. Yeah, but you have to ask questions. There's so many questions. There so are. many unanswered questions. There are. It, it, it just boggles the mind, right? Well, it's, it, it's, it's only because they like to think they're experts, and when they have a question they can't answer, they get flustered. All right, we'll take a a little break. Christina Abarici is coming on in just a moment. She is an illustrator. She talks about the future, not the past. Yeah. She's a a winner of the Writers and Illustrators of the Future, Volume 32, which is uh, a a new book that came out, I guess, earlier this month. And I will be talking to her in just a moment. This is The Source, WOCA Ocala. Radio. I'm Pat O'Neill. Donald Trump says if he becomes president, it doesn't look like he's going to have a very good relationship with Britain's prime minister. David Cameron's called Trump's plan to ban Muslims from entering the U.S. stupid and wrong. Trump says... Number one, I'm not stupid, okay? I can tell you that right now. Uh, just the opposite. And number two, in terms of divisive, I don't think I'm a divisive person. I'm a unifier. Unlike our president now, I'm a unifier. Trump on ITV. Four weeks after the death of Prince, a private service at the late musician's church. Prince's sister going out of her way to say the family had nothing to do with tribute but did say they support any memorials for Prince and that the family hopes to have their own larger one hopefully in August. Ted Haller, Fox affiliate KMSP in Minnetonka, Minnesota. More hearings start today over last fall's El Faro disaster. 33 died when the freighter sank in a hurricane in the Atlantic. Fox News. We report. You decide. Never know how Some people steer clear of store brands, but Napa Conventional Motor Oil for $2.19 a quart is more than a store brand. It has the Napa logo on it, a logo that represents quality and knowledge, the same logo on the store and that guy's shirt. So pick up Napa Conventional Motor Oil for $2.19 a quart, only available at, you guessed it, Napa. That's Napa know-how. General states pricing. Sales prices do not include applicable state, local taxes, or recycling fees. Offer expires 531.16. And now, insurance-minded speeches from GEICO. Hardship. My grandmother would go through it every month to pay her insurance bill. First, she would handwrite a paper check, in cursive. Then, using her own tongue, she would wet a stamp for an envelope. Today, however, we need not weary our hands and tongues. Today, we can pay our GEICO bill with the GEICO app. Away with hardship, in with bill pay on the Geico app. Thank you. Yeah, counsel. Central Florida Eye Institute is the area's leader in laser vision correction. From high definition refraction surgery and LASIK vision correction to custom cataract, glaucoma, and diabetic treatment, you can count on Dr. Crowley and his effective, friendly staff to provide you with the quality care you deserve. Call 352 237 8400 for an appointment or more information. That number again is 352 237 8400. Looking forward to service your vision needs. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. Just a one degree increase in body temperature can make it harder to fall asleep and stay asleep. To make yourself twice as happy today or tomorrow or the next day, it's, it's very simple. Do five good deeds all in one single day. Get on LinkedIn. It turns out 89% of companies have used it to find new hires and post a professional-looking photo. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. 
Hey, I'm Gary. And I'm Eric. Did you know that Red Eye Radio is on WOCA The Source every night from 2 to 6 a.m. and it's live. That's right. No tape shows here. We know that the news doesn't sleep. And neither do we. So we're here with you live from 2 till 6 a.m. every weekday. Call us 866-90-RED-EYE. So join me, Gary McNamara. And me, Eric Harley, every weeknight to discuss the latest in news and entertainment right here on WOCA The Source. Good credits, bad credits. It's none of our business because we're not an auto dealer. We're not a bank. We're not your mother. We're OcalaForSale.com, Marion County's marketplace for cars, trucks, and SUVs. We've got thousands of sellers standing by to take your call. No middleman. But hurry, don't walk, don't run. Just sit down and log on to OcalaForSale.com. License and inventory change daily. Offer does not include dealer up charge. Undercutting rust proofing factory surcharge or delivery fee. See website for details. Hi, I'm Leah Caruso with Strive Rehabilitation, inviting you to join me Thursday at 11 a.m. for Health Matters. Ocala Health and Strive have teamed up to bring you the latest information.